Hey, it's Borderline Youper here again with a How I Done It video. Um, working on, I just picked this 2005 uh, Chevy Suburban 2500 up. Um, ended up driving it home from where I picked it up from and I threw an engine code. And it's the knock sensors. So, um, i got to tear the whole uh, air intake off in order to get down underneath there where the knock sensors are. And this is gonna be how I how I'm gonna go about doing it and this video will help me put it back together too because I can see what I took apart. So first of all, um, what I did is I relieved the fuel pressure on the engine by going into the fuse panel here and I pulled this relay right here. This is for the fuel pump. So I pulled that out and then I cranked over the engine. It didn't start. Um, but it should have relieved the pressure in the motor, so I won't, when I go to unhook the fuel line off the top of the air intake, um, I won't get sprayed with gasoline. So that's a good thing to do first. Pull this, crank the engine over a little bit, and get rid of your fuel pressure. Put that back on. Next thing I did after I did that is I disconnected the battery, of course, for safety. So what we're going to do now is remove the nice Vortec cover. And I think I don't have the right size. What size did I grab? Nine millimeter. It's eight millimeter. There's that beautiful cover off. Take that over here. Next, we're going to remove this uh, air intake here. So we're going to loosen the clamps up on here. Same size. Pull this one off. Should probably have an extension. It would go easier. I'm back at it here again. Plug this. That's that one. Stuff it down underneath the alternator. I need to take that plate off. I think I do because I gotta slide them wires over. So I'm gonna take that plate off up there. Just unplug the knock flow sensor here, or the knock sensors. This is the wire that goes behind this. I pulled up off of here, get a little slack. Yeah, I'm gonna have to undo that too because that one goes down to the back of the motor. Well, I got one side of the injectors unplugged here, and all that black stuff is all brittle on this motor, so I have to get the vacuum cleaner out before I pull all the actual intake so I don't get that crap down inside the motor. But I referenced a different YouTube video. But you got to pull, there's this plastic clip here, slides all the way out, and then you push this tab in, and they unlock off the top of there. Um, a little bit difficult when I first started, but as I got it, it went pretty good. Now I'm going to move on to this side and get all these injectors take, taken off. It looks like the clips are the opposite direction here, so that's going to be even more fun. Yeah. So I just unplugged that wire back there and took a little clip, oops, took the clip off the fuel line right there. And then this I took off of here, took this off of here. And what I'm gonna do is disconnect the fuel line next. Okay, I unbolted these three bolts here. This is loose, but it won't come off. Kind of hoping I don't have to take the coolant lines off of it. They have no way to clamp them. I was hoping I could just slide that off. I bought a new gasket for it. 
might still be able to maybe once I get the air intake loose. We'll have to see, I guess. Um, I got the gas line disconnected. Put a rag here because it's dripping gas. And I found some other tips on YouTube on buying these nice little quick disconnect couplers that work good. Um, so that's what's next. Remove the bolts for the air intake. I gotta go get a vacuum cleaner though. All this stuff, all the wiring harness stuff is all brittle on this motor. This motor has 110,000 miles on it. And uh, it all fell off and it kind of got down in next to the air intake and I don't want that falling in the engine so I have to get a vacuum cleaner. Well, it took a little words of encouragement and I got her out, but I did break, I don't know what I did with it, what did I do with it, I broke it, because well, this line right here, it wouldn't come off the top of the air intake very well, and I started reefing on it, and when I reefed on it, I reefed hard, and she broke loose, and it uh, busted off of that. I think there's an EGR valve or something like that back there. No, maybe not an EGR. I don't remember what you call them. But yeah, I busted off of that. So I'm going to have to get a new tube. Hopefully the local parts store has got one somewhere. But i got to clean it up and then get the knock sensors out next. Fun stuff. I got the wiring harness off the knock sensors and the computer was right. It definitely ain't going to get no signal from that one. It's full of ice and water. It froze. It's right full. And you see the front one there. That's what it's supposed to look like. And the back one's right chucked full of water. That'd be why it's not getting any sensing from that one. There's the old wire harness on the floor. I'll seal them up. You're gonna have to somehow have to get a hair dryer or something and thaw that water out in the back. And get it out of there. Well, <laughs> I got the uh, front knock sensor replaced and the brand new one in it. That hole was nice and clean. I did take the vacuum cleaner and suck out what I could out of it. Everything looked nice and shiny. But this back hole where the water was, if you can see in there or not, but there's still ice in there. This is a great thing about working on stuff in the winter time. It was full of water and it's Still froze with ice. I did get the ice out somewhat yesterday, but uh, apparently I didn't get it all out. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do because it kind of looked like there was a hole that went down into the motor, and I don't really want to pour water in there anymore to melt out the ice like I did because this was the knock sensor that was in the back back there. You can see it's all rusty and Nasty and now I got a dilemma of what to do. So I got to get the rest of that ice out of there. Because if I don't, it's just going to fail again. See, this is the one from the front. See how nice and clean and shiny that is. Boy, that's a nice knock sensor. It's hard to say that it was even, well, this wasn't the bad one. This one was actually doing what it was supposed to. But, um, but that was nice and clean. So, yeah, like I said yesterday, I poured hot water in it, and I boiled on the stove, melted the ice down so I could get it below the knock sensor in the, th in the top to screw it out, but apparently it didn't melt down below the knock sensor. So, well, see what I can figure out. Well, after a little bit of elbow grease and screwdriver and vacuuming, I gotta set the light there. I got the hole all cleaned out. I'll put the light over there like I had it before. Stay. There you can see it's nice and shiny. It's all nice and clean. Got all the ice out with the screwdriver and a 
vacuum cleaner. Now I can thread the knock sensor and then I took a little bit of emery cloth and cleaned the top of that where this makes contact onto the motor so it has a good ground because that's the only ground it's got. So took emery cloth, cleaned it up, sucked all the crud out of it with a vacuum. I wouldn't do it with your wife's good vacuum. I have an old bad one or a good shop or your shop vac you could use but i uh just have an old vacuum that i don't care about so i'll thread that down in there nice shiny one get the 22 millimeter socket you're up with my hand and then I got this referenced off of another YouTube video. I thanked that guy for it. Um, 15 foot pounds, torque it down. I believe that's what the spec is. Couldn't find it in my Haynes manual. Um, but I know from other videos they said that it's crucial to make sure you torque it down to the right spec. Otherwise you could break it. So digging around, 15 foot pounds is what I found. So got the old torque wrench there torque it down and I'm going to do some more cleaning on top of the motor and then I'll get on to putting the wire harness and the rubber grommets on well I got the wire harness installed and I took ultra black gasket mark maker and I went first inside the cup and then I shoved the Went inside the cup, all the way around it, both of them, and then I shoved that down in, the rubber cap down into it, and then I put another seal around the outside of, of the uh, rubber, so that hopefully no water gets down in there ever again. Because that's what kind of GM says to do, their service bulletin, is to make a little bit of a water dam so it can't go down in there. So hopefully that'll be good and sealed up. I won't have an issue with this again, and I hope the knock sensors are good. I have no way to test them. I don't have a voltometer that goes down to microvolts AC to actually test them. Just hoping and praying that they're good out of the box. They were wrapped pretty decent. They were in a plastic bag and then wrapped in bubble wrap, and then I believe they were in a in another box too. So. Hopefully it won't be bad jostling around and shipping and stuff, but what are you going to do? So i got a little more cleaning up to do around the uh, air intake holes for the valves. And I'll start reassembling. Well, I got motor all cleaned up, shined up. Pretty where the seals got to seal down on the heads. And I took the old gaskets off. There's the old gaskets. Got new gaskets. They just, there's clips here on the side. One there. One, my finger's in the way. One here. And one here on this side. They just unclip. And the intake manifold gasket pops off. I wiped all of this down. Cleaned off all the gook. I mean, I tried to be careful so I didn't get the injectors. Got to, you know, I don't want dirt to get plugged in the injectors. But took in the vacuum, make sure nothing falls in there. Banged it out on the table too. So you might was flip this thing over. Put the new gasket on the other side. It's still dumping gas all over the place. And then there's the other side. Like I said, I wiped all this, all this down, cleaned it all up, and get the new gasket here. Ugh. Since you're in there, you might as well put new gaskets in. And I don't think there's a left or right to these because there's only one way they can snap on. So you just. You 
went easier with one hand or with two hands. Snapped on there. Snapped on there. And that's it. That's pretty nice, actually. Pretty little ingenious gasket. So you don't have to worry about it falling off when you're going to put the uh, air intake back on. You can flip it back over here. I should probably wipe off the crud on the pipe stand here so I don't get dirt all over my brand new gaskets that's that now I can go ahead and finagle that thing back in there it takes a little bit to do but it should be not too bad Well, it took a little finagling, but I got the air intake back on there. This little deal here, the way to do that is tip this 90 degrees, it'll move. And that makes the tube go in there a heck of a lot easier. So it, it worked a lot better to get that in there. And then I made sure I put my gasket in back in here before I slip this back on and bolt that down because in order to get this off, I had to be able to finagle the air intake. But that's sitting on there. You can bolt them back down to spec and uh, start plugging everything back in. So that's gonna do is torque down those bolts. I gotta consult my manual, my Haynes manual, and uh, see what the, the foot pounds are or inch pounds. So there's a sequence that you need to follow to tighten these in. Uh, I do have a Haynes manual. I don't know if it's copyrighted thing with YouTube, so I'm not going to show the picture. But um, the bolt sequence. So bolt number one is this one right here. I just put my ratchet on, so well. Snug that up by hand. That's what I'm going to do with all these first, but just get them snugged in by hand. And then two is directly across it, so that's the opposite side over here. This one there. Got to be this guy here. So that's two. And three is right behind it, right behind the, oh man. So three is this one right back here that you can't see very good. Right down behind here. Oops. Uh, there we go. Right down back there, that's three. And then four is this one right here. And five is behind number one. Just back here. Six is the one here in front. Right here. And seven is this guy. Right in the very, very front. And eight is the very far back corner. There you at. can't do this very good and record this well that's eight in the back there and nine is on the opposite side in the very back and then ten is this one in the front so that's how you got to torque them down um, it says to torque them first to 44 inch pounds in step one and then uh, crank your inch pounds to 88 inch pounds on the second step after you go through and do them all once and then at 44 and then you go back and do them all again at 88 and that's it 88 inch pounds make sure you use inch pounds not foot pounds 44 inch pounds 
88 inch pounds. Okay, well, I got all the bolts torqued down on the um, intake, and then I just rebolted that the uh, throttle body back onto the front. And that torque spec is 89 inch pounds for those these three bolts. There's one there, one down there, and one there. I replaced that gasket too. It's a brand new gasket back there. So that was 89 inch pounds, and now I will start plugging everything back in. That's the next step. Valve recycling there. That's plugged back in. This goes back on here. There's a throttle body, fly-by wire, instead of cable. Ow. Put this back in. Oops, I'll drop it. I got it upside down. Snap back in, the lock in. And then the injector is here. You should just... leave plug back in unless I gotta pull a little I might have to pull these tabs back open it should just snap up and over I think that's it it's not back on there it's locked I think that thing's back down where it belongs yep so I will repeat the process I got one plug in I want to forget this guy back here on the very back of the air intake I don't know what that's for but that's plugged in. And then you got the new knock sensor wire. Clip on here. Like that. And that'll plug in there. That's locked in. Oops. Uh, I think the wire's okay back there. It's not rubbing nothing, so. See, I broke this hose going from the PCV valve back there in the corner, and I was trying to pull this off. I got a new one coming, so that's fun stuff. But continue to plug here. Everything else is buttoned up, put back together, air box, everything's good to go. I fired it up and ran it. Fired right up, no problem, so um, hopefully I won't get that code no more and the knock sensors are all good to go. I just got to put the fancy cover back on the top and I won't do that until they put the PCV valve tubing back on there. So, But I hope this helps somebody and how I done the uh, knock sensors in this 2005 Chevy Suburban 2500 with a 6.0 liter. Borderline Uper out.